<laughs> well, welcome everybody to this great time, this great day. So many people in the audience from so many different places have to mention you. Dad's first dance party, Grace, is standing right over here. And of course, his 1947 showbiz sweetheart, Eddie. Yes. Oh, she was. Where is she? Where is she? Friends of Unity, uh, gosh, family, neighborhood friends, everybody. Doctors, lawyers, uh, dentists, uh, barbers, uh, gosh, the whole fan family is, I mean, uh, darn family, so. all of Bud Mercer's acquaintances, and of course his family and his grandchildren, and great grandchildren. Anyway, I'm Buddy Mercer, and I'd like to present to you the man of the hour. And featuring Molly. Here's a bit. Oh, very kind. Here's a routine they did just recently. Um, our days we have one day a week that we meet as much as we can 
to have a private and um, honestly, I don't think I teach him a thing. You know, <laughs> I think that I have learned more from this experience than you know all of my years of, of teaching and everything. It's just been such an honor. These little nuggets of truth. Um, I call him the King of Charisma because we always we'll talk about our number and how we're going to perform it, and he'll remind me. He goes, but it's all about the charisma. <laughs> and, and that's so true, and he always has, almost every week, week, some little bit of advice or some little truth from his life's experience that he, experiences that he wants to share. And shame on me for not writing every one of them down, but, <laughs> but he's just, it's just been such an honor, and he's just s such an inspiring person. Thank you, bud. Yeah, I think the man of the hour has a word or two. You wanna, you wanna say, what is it? You wanna say a word or two? A word or two. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for coming. This is a very special occasion for me, but I hope it is for you too. My son, buddies, and I are trying to put forward put together an act that we can do, although we won't be able to work the Palm Springs Fathers because they're closing the show down. And that, that kind of hurt our, our uh, plans because we decided we were going to open up there. But uh, the producer said, no, we've got to have it come in. We're going to close down next year. So I said, okay. So Buddy and I have been trying trying to get together our act to perform anywhere. And uh, show the people wherever they want to watch it. And now it's time to start the act. <laughs> special song that you wanted to uh, introduce to the, yes, to the I, act? I have one that I don't think many people have heard because it just came into my mind and I don't remember where I heard it so long ago. However, it is a cute song and I'd like to sing it for you. My wife is on a diet and since she's on a diet she and Love and shrimp, I must leave alone. 
I'm the only lobster she allows in my home. My wife is on a diet, and since she's on a diet, I'm losing a pound every day. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen that before. I don't know. As I say, it must be an awfully old song because it, it came to me like it just popped into my head and I remembered it. <laughs> However, we're going to do some more songs. Yeah, a lot of things pop in your head, Dad. Jeez. <laughs> what's that, uh, what's that uh, song about the donut? Remember that one? Oh, sure. I'm not sure what key we did it in. I win. I win. That's better. I was feeling very hungry from my head to my feet. I went into a bakery to get something to eat. I picked up a donut and I picked off the grease. I handed the lady a five-cent piece. She had the nickel and she looked at me. She said, this nickel is no good to me. There's a hole in the middle and it's all the way through. I said, there's a hole in the donut too. <laughs> Right around the time I was born, maybe the year after. And uh, they put a song out, never got sheet music for it. Hit the hit parade, and I don't think it made the top 20, but great song. It's called uh, When You and I Were Young, Maggie Blues. And I'm Gary, and he's big. <laughs> Let's see. Get my head straight here. You know, this is the biggest captive audience I think we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I've been requested to sing an old time song. Hey, that's my part. Something our granddaddies used to sing. No, it was my dad and your granddaddy. When I'm a little plan. And I'll do the best I can to sing an old song so we all can understand. You said I want to be able to date 
then you dream of the hill Don't go to the To watch the sea People still ask me if I'm related to Johnny Mercer. I said, well, I'll, I'll show you my checking account if you like. And, uh, <laughs> no, I met Johnny Mercer. You did? Yes, I did. And where was this? Years ago in Chicago. When Chicago? Started. Uh -huh. He was writing songs in the second floor, the steps right up in front of the building. And he had a little office just off of the ledge. So when Jim and I were working in Chicago, I thought, I'm going to find out before we leave to Johnny Mercy. So I went up and talked to him. And uh, he said, I, I don't remember him. I said, but, but if you remember, there was a, a story about a, a, a lot of money coming to the Mercy. If you, if you didn't hear the story, we're not related. Because that was a story that came out about my father getting $100,000 from New York property in New York and the see your way back bought it and then they invested the property in, right in New York City was it, where they put up the buildings to have all, all of these big buildings put on it and that, that's when a lawyer got a hold of it and said well you should have some money coming from that how many years ago it was about 150 years before so we tried to get it, and the lawyer promised that he would stay, stick with it. But eventually, you know how those big companies do, they just kept refusing, kept refusing, kept refusing, kept refusing, so it never did come through. Eventually, we thought the lawyer was paid off just to get rid of the problem. However, we're not related. We're not related. 